For the first time in the history of World Skills, the World Skills competition was held in the Middle East, in United Arab Emirates' capital city, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is home to one of the tallest skyscrapers, the world's furthest leaning man-made tower, and the only hotel which is built over a Formula One track. Its architectural wonders set us thinking about the level of planning and skills involved in the construction of these iconic landmarks. Amid the towering structures of this cosmopolitan city, 21 young men and women from Team Singapore were spurred on to reach for the skies. They competed in 19 skill areas in WorldSkills Abu Dhabi 2017, the 44th edition of the competition. To prepare for this biennial skills challenge, each member of Team Singapore went through intensive training almost every day. They showed commitment and grit, earning their right to represent Singapore in the largest global vocational education and skills event. The scope of fate forwarding can be really, really wide as well, so I have to just grasp as, as much knowledge in every field as I can. On top of honing their technical skills, competitors participated in camps, focusing on communication, resilience and team building. The big performance has helped me um, identify what's the strength and weakness of my, myself. Let's say I um, messed up or I panicked during the competition, what do I do to recover, recover back from the competition? A strong network of officials, experts, coaches, families and friends support the competitors in every possible way. As a nation, Singapore also supports its youth in pursuing skills-based education and encourages them to benchmark their capabilities against exacting international standards. After months of preparation and anticipation, it was time for the competitors to make their mark in Abu Dhabi. The reason we're flying there to Abu Dhabi is to give moral support partly. Uh, that is to calm him down more or less, that he will not be so stressed out. Not only are our competitors role models in their respective skill areas, they are also the face of Singapore in this global society. Through the One School, One Country program, they played a part in promoting Singapore's unique culture through their actions and interactions with the locals. At the international level, it allows us, uh, particularly our, the best and brightest among our young Singaporeans, uh, to benchmark themselves, to benchmark the level of skills attainment against the very best around the world. And through that process, uh, they'll learn from their, their colleagues, their peers around the world, uh, and raise the overall standards and, and skills in Singapore. On 14 October, almost 1,300 international competitors from some 60 countries and regions gathered to battle in over 50 categories of this skills championship. It is because of the vision of the Crown Prince and that of the other leaders of the United Arab Emirates that World Skills is here today. Young people are more than capable of improving our world with the power of skills. Every one of you is already a winner. And by competing here in Abu Dhabi, you are also a world skills champion. Time has come for the competitors to show the world Singapore's level of skills mastery. Bearing the pressure of the four-day competition, our competitors gave their best in the 19 skills areas Singapore competed in.
first day, you know, when I first met them before they went to the competition site, uh, they were all uh, relatively nervous and tense, uh, not really knowing what to expect. And uh, the good thing is uh, on the second day this morning when I met them, uh, they were much more relaxed, they were quite happy uh, what they did the day before and uh, looking forward to the next competition. Day one is facial and pedicure. Um, it was quite stressful, but I did my best. Today I will continue to do better. Day two, my plan is to actually learn from my mistakes in day one, which is to actually give myself more buffer space in terms of the time, time duration. So that way, if let's say I were to make a mistake or there's an unexpected 30% change again, I would be more prepared and have more time to gather myself and do a better job. I think they are all highly spirited, very focused and uh, very determined to win. This is a, a lifetime experience for all of them. Uh, I hope they will enjoy it, treasure it, make lots of friends and hopefully they will pursue a career in this area of skill in which they have developed tremendous competency. Boys and girls did really well in the past 11th installment of the World Skills Competition. This is the first time they are competing after I became Minister in Charge of Skills. So I thought I should come and support them. Partly to give them a bit of moral support and encouragement. Uh, secondly, to emphasize how important Skills Future as a national movement is. World Skills Competition 2017 provided the ideal platform for youths to assess and display their talents in various trades on a global stage. As the competition drew to an end, it became clear that our competitors' efforts have paid off. Bronze! The medal goes to Kai Hao Andrew Tan, Singapore! The bronze medal goes to Fazira Zulkifli, Singapore. This is bronze medalist. Kang Lee Lee, Singapore. So the gold medals go to Wenzin Olivia Lo, Singapore. And honestly, I had been prepping for like third or second, so um, I was really, really happy when it came to the, to the, to the goal. I feel very humble and honoured to get Singapore goal and uh, Singapore best of nation. This competition has uh, grown uh, bigger and bigger as uh, you know we have uh, the competition that goes forward. We won uh, two goals, uh, three bronzes, and uh, eight medallions of excellence. Well done. Team Singapore, we are proud of your achievements. Congratulations. The competition may be over, but we know that you will continue perfecting your craft on your individual skills journey and career.